تبسم تبسم وخل الهموم وخل الغموم وخل الضجا السلام عليكم ورحمة الله أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين والصلاة والسلام على أشرف المرسلين سيدنا ونبينا وحبيبنا مولانا محمد صلى الله عليه وسلم على آله وصحبه وآله السلام اللهم لا علم لنا إلا ما علمتنا إنك أنت العليم الحكيم فدعوا شكرا جزاك الله خير فضيحة بتيونيتي سبيك يا It is just unbelievable you know, um, how these things, how these things worked. And that kind of interaction, um, cross-pollination, worked over centuries. And then the Muslims, true to themselves, developed their own paradigms, firmly rooted in these two sources of grace, which we call the Quran and the Sunnah. And so it is that within this broad spectrum of knowledge that emerged, over that thousand years, that, you know, that, that, that glorious thousand years. And I mean with warts and all. I don't airbrush over our difficulties, you know, uh, or, or even try to misrepresent it, you know. Um, yeah. Uh, within that broad spectrum of shared knowledge. And that's what Muslims did. They took from others, but they brought it firmly into the Islamic spirit of things. And in fact, opened up doors for other people through that particular spirit. And difference of opinion, there was that uniting factor. And there was that mutual respect um, uh, amongst one another that, in fact, empowered the broader communities within which, within which they lived. And Imam Shaf himself had said, Al-Ilm Nur. And this is, one of the, this is one of the issues that we really need to understand, that Knowledge in Islam is not just discursive, rational knowledge of the, of the mind. It's not confined to that. We can all be clever and study and research, produce our journals and our papers. Um, we can, we can, we can, you know, we, in fact, up to the, so many Muslims are at the forefront, you know, of, of this kind of, 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 of uh, uh, development, educational and otherwise and things like that. But Islam is not just about information. Islam is about transformation. Knowledge that, in fact, transforms people. The very nature of people, it transforms us. And that is what we need to understand. We can all glut ourselves with all sorts um, of, 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 of knowledge. But what does Allah Ta'ala say in the Quran? He says, لَقَدْ مَنَّ اللَّهَ عَلَى الْمُؤْمِنِينَ إِذَا بَعَثَ فِيهِمْ رَسُولًا إِذَا بَعَثَ فِيهِمْ رَسُولًا أَنفُسِهِمْ يَتْلُوا عَلَيْهِمْ يَتْلُوا عَلَيْهِمْ أَيَّاتِهِ وَيُزَكِّيهِمْ وَيُعَلِّمُهُمُ الْكِتَابَ وَالْحِكْمَةِ These are three essential ingredients um, of, 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 of the process of teaching. Allah Ta'ala says that, that he confers a great favor on believers when he sent among them an, ap an apostle from among them in anfusihim. That he sent a prophet from uh, amongst themselves. Rehearsing unto them the signs of Allah Ta'ala. Purifying them and instructing them in scripture and in, 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 in wisdom. These three ingredients are exceptionally important. That a prophet was sent to Yatlu alayhim ayati, meaning that he was a conveyor of divine signs, divine knowledge, sacred knowledge, number one. يُعَلِّمُهُمُ kitab, as a teacher of divine revelation, the book, and hikmah above all else. And we have to understand that the Quran is first of all, first of all, a huda, and then a book of knowledge. And then, a, if you wish to reduce it to something pedag pedagogical, um, right from the outset, we have Alif Lamin, Dalik al Kitab la Riba Fihi, Huda lil Mutaqin. Alif Lamin, we're not going to go into tafsir of that. Dalik al Kitab la Riba Fihi. This book, this kitab, in which there is no doubt, but 
what is its central focus. The central focus of this book is that it is a huda lil alamin that acts as a, it's a guidance, and therefore it fulfills a holistic uh, function in educating human beings. And so Allah Ta'ala says at the beginning, Ikra bismi rabbika alladhi khalaq. Allah Ta'ala does not say, Ikra bismi lahi alladhi khalaq. Ikra bismi rahman alladhi khalaq. Allah Ta'ala could have said any of those things. And we know that Allah Ta'ala is hyper careful in choosing the words for each and every ayah. Why? Because Allah Ta'ala says, Law kanu al-bahar rumidan li kalimati rabbi, la nafid al-bahar qabla an tanfad kalimati rabbi. Wa law jikna bi mithli madada. That's what Allah Ta'ala says. So the Qur'an is the perfect word of God, of Allah Ta'ala, but it can't be the complete word. But the nas of the Qur'an, is it not so? Someone tried to accuse me of blasphemy. The Qur'an says it. It's the perfect word of God. But Allah Ta'ala, of Allah Ta'ala, but he says that if the ocean were a, an impact um, to write down and scribe the words of Allah Ta'ala, then that ocean would become exhausted. Even if you came with another ocean, the like of it. What more inspiration can we get to, 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 to explore and excavate the meanings that are embedded in that Quran? So even if you come with a like of it, that, that size of that ocean, the actual word will, will be exhausted. There is, no, there is no amount of ink on this planet that can fully explicate the word of Allah Ta'ala. So we are sitting with the perfect word of Allah Ta'ala, not the complete one. And remember that. And that alone should act as a, 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 an inspiration to us to plow the depths of this beautiful book and to dig out the wisdom of this book. And if we do it within the spirit of Islam, without kibr, without malice, without you know, haughtiness and all of these blameworthy qualities that Imam Ghazali so beautifully explicates in the Hayal al-Mudain, then we will get back that glory that this civilization um, once was. We speak about fiqh people, and one of the reasons of this college is to empower people um, at, ve at various levels, and not just to inform them. The, 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 the forward goes here, um, the three things, it's education, of course, and then compassion and illumination. Rahma is one of the central in the ma'ana rahmatun muhdat. Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam is primarily is a rahma muhdat. He's a guided mercy to humanity. And there are so many, so many things. Ar-Rahman, Ar-Rahimun, Ar-Rahimun, Ar-Rahman. Ir-Rahimun, man fi al-Ard, Ar-Rahimun, man fi al-Sama. Ar-Rahimun, Ar-Rahimun. Those people of mercy are the people, if you are a, if you are a vessel, a channel, a repository of mercy, then Allah Ta'ala will have mercy upon you. And so Allah Ta'ala commands you, irhamu man fil be merciful towards your brothers and your sisters here on earth, then the one who is in the heavens will show mercy towards you. Otherwise we won't. There's a divine and integral reciprocal relationship between ourselves and Allah. A community came to Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam and said, what is this rubbish about Salat al-Istisqa? We, 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 we are performing it and there's a drought for a year, two years, and nothing is happening. And the first question Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam asked them, all in Bukhari people, the first question Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam asked them was, are there any people who are nudging and not giving their zakat in your community? And they said, yeah, sorry, yeah, you know, we're trying, but we will get there. He said, subhanAllah. You want your rain, your sustenance from Allah Ta'ala, but you are depriving hundreds of impoverished people from their rain, from their sustenance in your zakat, and you're one of the richest tribes. That's how selfish human beings are. That's our problem. And one of the objectives of the school, inshallah Ta'ala, is to teach that part of compassion. And not that selfishness to which we are prone, and then still we want to pray and blame and bomb. We need to look at the fiqh al-Akbar as explicated by people like Ghazali, like Abu Hanifa, like so many other people. But we forget the great values with which Islam came. And amongst those values, I will just very quickly, I will just very quickly mention some of the values um, which uh, Muhammad ibn Zaha beautifully explicates in a work of his called Al-Alaqat al fil Islam. And let us just ponder and reflect upon these points. 
You see, we are a community obsessed with halal and haram. Everything is haram. By triple expense, is it haram or not? And I mean, it's good, you know, I mean, like, fine. We, we, we are people concerned about halal and haram. The Prophet and the Sahaba, the only things they questioned were the meat when they went into, um, um, into, into non-Muslim countries and cities and places, and they ate, ate everything else. They drank from their glasses. They didn't even ask them. They just asked them to wash their glasses. Um, they didn't even ask him if someone had a bottle of wine, you know, some wine in that glass, 10 minutes, because they considered that as a lack of adab. We are so different in our supposed piety and our self-righteousness. We need to become critical of ourselves. I love this deen. In the deen, in Allah, I believe in that. I spent 11 years studying this deen, and I still can't study enough because I love this deen so much. So I love to share it, but you're welcome to tear me apart, criticize me, do whatever you want. But all I know is I love this deen. And these are some of the values that we hope to, to explore, to develop, and to impart our students within this institute. Alhamdulillah, and the, you know, amazing how the brainwave came to Dr. Nunawi and at the same time to my late great Sheikh Sayyid Muhammad Ali al Maliki when he took me to the airport and he said, You know, um, Siraj, we need to think about an institution here, a year course. Dr. Nunawi is also a student of Sayyid Muhammad Ali al Maliki and we just spoke about it and we were amazed. I mean, I hadn't met him before, he hadn't met me before, that, you know, we shared the same um, idea, feeling, you know, when are we going to get started with this thing? And Alhamdulillah, he came along. It's quite absolutely amazing because we thought independently about this. But allow me to, to, to share some of the, the values because that is what we are losing as Muslims. We do salah, we do all these things, you know. But do we want to be amongst those alladheena hum yura'oona wa yamna'oona ma'oon? Do we want to be amongst those who are seen in our salah every day, who are seen in the tawaqis, our turbans and everything, all the external trappings of Islam, which are, which are all good, but yet inside that immortal qalb is in a state of ruin? There's nothing there. They want to be seen in the salah, but they but they 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 they, they, they deprive the the neighbors of the of the of the smallest thing. For example, if your neighbor comes in and out, and a ma'un is actually a little axe. It's actually a something that you can use, you know, um, to fix something. Uh, they have the or I have difference of opinion what that ma'un actually is. But some say it's a little axe, or it's a hammer, or it's something like that. You are seen in your salah, but when your neighbor comes across, the poor man or woman doesn't have uh, an axe that moment or a saw that moment, they just, or, or a needle that moment. I mean, they mention all of these things in the tafsirs. People, you understand Arabic, go, and go to that tafsir, and you will know I'm not lying. Um, but to deny them that, and yet to come stand here pious in front of Allah Ta'ala, and you perform your salah, do you want to be amongst those people? الَّذِينَ هُمْ يُرَعُونَ وَيَمْنَعُونَ الْمَعُونَ Others interpret the game as orphans, you know, and stuff like that. But I prefer to see it as a little needle rather than orphan. Orphan is a big issue. Uh, you know, that little needle, you, you, you are too selfish to, to share that little needle with your neighborhood. But we all want to be, you know, seen in our salats. There, 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 there is an integral thing. You know, it's, Islam is a holistic, integrated uh, deen. When Allah Ta'ala tells us, if you do the la ilaha illallah, you know, those tasbihs, la hawla wa la quwata illa billahi illa al yadhim, Allahu Akbar, the tasbih, the tahmeed, and the tahleel, what Allah Ta'ala says, alhamdulillah, la ilaha illallah, Allahu Akbar, if you make those tasbihs, what, what, what does the hadith say about that? Every time you make a tasbih, you say, Allahu Akbar, la ilaha illallah, um, alhamdulillah, subhanallah, then you are building your garden in Jannah. You are planting your seedlings in Jannah. Every act that you do here is an act that impacts directly upon your posthumous becoming in the Jannah in the earth because it's a real place. And therefore we refer to this dunya as a dunya because it comes from the word dana, adna, meaning it's close, to, it's close to our hearts. That is a bit hard. It's close to our hearts. Why do we refer to the akhirah as the akhirah? Because it's so far away from our consciousness from our consciousness. What we need to do is engage in inversion of these things. And the only way in which we can engage in inversion is if we realize one of the prime values that Islam wants to in, uh, inculcate in us. And I will end on this um, note, insha'Allah ta'ala. Number one, and I will expound them as expounded by uh, Muhammad Abu Zahra. Number one is the, 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 the uh, 
the basic precept in Islam is that of karamat al insaniyah that all human beings are noble and honored in the eyes of Allah Ta'ala. Laqad karamna bani Adam. It doesn't say laqad karamna al Muslimin, laqad karamna al Budiyya, laqad karamna this and that. It says laqad karamna everyone. We have not karamna the Arab or the Indian or the Persian or the Jewish or the what or the European or the South African or whatever. Lakat karamna bani Adam. The diversity is beautiful. We are all the makhlukat with our different languages, different races, you know, shu'uban. Khalaqnakum shu'uban kabail. It's beautiful. This is a tapestry of Allah Ta'ala's art. But the asub with it is haram. Lakat karamna bani Adam. It is beyond that. But we are the beauty. We are the beauty. We are the artistic expression, divine artistic expression of Allah Ta'ala. Allah Ta'ala. We have to show, and how often do we not show this? We have to respect our human beings regardless of their faith. Lakat karamna bani Adam. Second one is anna nas jami'an ummatun wahida. That the entire humanity is one ummah. Why? Ya ayyuhan nas, inna khalaqna kum min nafsin wahida, wa khalaqna minha zawjaha, wa batha minhuma rija. كَثِيرًا وَنِسَاءً وَاتَّقُوا اللَّهَ الَّذِي يَتَسَاءَلُونَ بِهِ وَالْأَرْحَامَ إِنَّ اللَّهَ كَانَ عَلَيْكُمْ رَقِيبًا We recite this in every, in almost in every khutbah in Jama'ah, in, um, in, in the nikah. يَا أَيُّهَا النَّاسِ إِنَّ النَّاسِ Not Muslimin, يَا مُؤْمِنِينَ يَا مُؤْمِنِينَ or whatever. But يَا أَيُّهَا النَّاسِ Oh people, universally, we have created you from a single plot, from a single essence. From a single essence. And from there, from them to, from, from, uh, and from there, we created its, its partner. And from them twain, we created the rest of humanity. Everyone. We are one ummah people. We are all the children of Allah Ta'ala. We are all the makhlukat of Allah Ta'ala. The human of us and the animal of us. Everyone, everything is created by Allah Ta'ala. And that is our muntalaq. These are our basic platforms and premises from where we work. You don't work from the premises that a person is a kafir first and, and then a human being. He's first a human being and then he's a kafir or he's a this or he's a that. And then you will work with respect. The third one is at ta'awun or insani. That we have to mutually engage in helping people when they're in crisis, whether they're Muslim or, non, or, 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 or non-Muslims. Why? How did the Fatu Makkah take place? The Fatu Makkah, Bani Bakr, was a mushrik tribe who signed on the side of the Muslims and two years later, that was signed for 10 years. Two years later, they broke, the Mushrikeen in Makkah broke that, the, 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 the terms of the treaty, and started to persecute Bani Bakr, who were Mushriks. They escaped out of, uh, out of the informed the Prophet, and the Prophet garnered the entire army because of a Mushrik, of a Mushrik tribe that was persecuted, and they walked into Makkah, and they took Makkah over, the conquest of Makkah. Subhanallah. They, then they went to the Muslims of Medina, went to liberate and help a kafir mushrik tribe who were persecuted against the terms of that treaty. Do we have the confidence and the courage to do this? And the entire Bani Bakr became Muslim. Subhanallah. These are Muslims, people. These are mu'mineen. These are muhsineen. These are muttaqeen. These are true muqatineen fi sabilillah. Wallahi. These are true mutawakkilin. These are true sabirin. Because they have to sabr with that treaty. The fourth one is tasamuh ihtiram. Respect and tolerance for other people. I'm not even going to talk about that. I just want to mention that I think I'm really running out of, out of time now. The fifth one is khurriya. Khurriya to ra'iyat, tasamuh, muzamanat. All types of khurriyat. You know, freedom to express our views, freedom to associate with people, freedom of speech, and etc., etc. The sixth one is moral excellence, al fadila. Do we do we have we embraced that those concepts of, of fadila, of, of 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 exercising sound and beautiful morality in our relationships with with with, with other people? We ought to be at the at, at the head of that, you know. وَمَا أَرْسَلْنَاكَ إِلَّا رَحْمَةً لِلْعَالَمِينَ وَمَا أَرْسَلْنَاكَ إِلَّا لِأُتِيمَّ مَقَارِمَ الْأَخْلَاقِ I have not been sent except, except to, 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 to cure and to mend and to fix 
the makan and the akhlaq, the conduct of people and end of the behavior. Number seven, al-adala. لا يجرم أنكم شنانكم من على لا تعجلوا إجلوا وأقربوا لتقوى. Do not allow the hatred of other people. The hatred of other people cause you not to engage in justice. Engage in justice. Be just, for that is closer to taqwa. Even if it's your enemy, be just. Do we do that? You know, نبأت is معاملة أو أو interaction with other people. How do we how do we interact with people? The Prophet said, "Amilun nas bima tuhib an tu amilu kum bihi." Work with people, interact with them, treat them as you like to be treated, as you want to be treated. Don't kick them, smack them, and spit in their faces and walk off. Do you like? Would you like that? Would I like that? We wouldn't. The ninth one, Allah Allah fa'u bilah. Ofu ofu bi uhurikum ida ahadum. Be, be, be loyal to your contracts once you've made a contract. And that's universal. That applies even when you have visas. You live in other countries. You go there. It's a contract that you engage in with other communities. And you have to be faithful to that contract. And I'm working on a work at the moment on minorities in Islam and fiqh and stuff like that. But we have to be faithful you know, to the laws of other countries. Except we can avo avoid the, the nonsense. Like the selling of khamar and the doing and the discotheques and all these things. But if there are just laws in place, we have to uh, be faithful to it. You know, all laws are not just, they are, they are not unjust because they are, they are the source is not, is not uh, a kafir source. When they, when, they, when they went to the negers, they, they praised the negers. The source was Christianity and, and, and the enacted justice at the time. And it was not to the Muslim. And the last one is manu fasad. Al-Mawadda wa man fasad A very important combination of two different um, uh, states. Al-Mawadda, love amongst people, and man fasad and to prevent evil. Mawadda was Mawadda, intense love. man fasad is to try to stop corruption in society, and any evil, and anything wicked, etc., etc. But when you do so, you do so with Mawadda. Don't do so with aggression. Don't go and wring the man's neck in the road and say, stop drinking wine, for example, or stop going to that brothel. Take him inside the house, give him some tea and coffee, and talk to him rationally about it. Talk to him. A Bedouin came to the Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu one day and listened to his approach, and I'll end on this. Sorry about this. I just love, I love this crowd, love the feeling here. Um, a man came to the Prophet and said, Bedouin just recently embraced Islam. And he said, look, I have a problem. I love Islam, everything about it. But I have a sexual problem. You know, I'm a, a Rajal Shabak. Shabak means that you, it's, it's oversex, the highly sex man. And the Prophet said, okay, well, well, what's the problem? You know, he's just telling you what you are. So he says, do you give me, Wallahi, do you give me permission to engage in fornication? Not necessarily in adultery. If, I, if we distinguish in fornication as, you know, um, unmarried people and um, adultery as married people. And he said, just to fornicate with other women. Said, How many wives? He probably had 50 wives because it wasn't applied yet the, the law. So the Prophet said, well, it could be okay. Listen to his answer. I mean, if it comes to me and I'll smack the guy out of my house, man, you know. And let's face it. Let's be honest. Most of us will do it. You come to the last to have sex with your daughter. Come on, man. Get a life. You know? But listen to the Prophet's answer. He said, okay, we can think about it. But just tell me, um, do you have a mother? He says, yes, I've got a mother. And he says, do you have a sister? And he says, yes, I have a sister. And the prophet says, okay, you can do that, but would you allow uh, someone else to do that to your mother and to your sister? He said, what? I'll kill him. So he says, just remember, that sister has brothers and fathers that you want to fornicate with, and they would all want to kill you. <laughs> you know, he appeals to the nature of people. Instead of chucking the guy out, he does that. Um, let me just end up on the, uh, the, the um, and the service of day, but the, uh, the institution, Shalta, which, you, which you, you are all invited to attend the launch of the Guinea Institute at the Ansar Law in Overport this afternoon um, at 4 p.m. in Shalta. Um, the, the institute's one year intensive Usul Deen Foundational Scholarship of Islamic Sciences program is unique in that it is based on the study of essential classical Islamic texts. It synthesizes modern and traditional methods of teaching, combines religious sciences with technical and social skills, 
under the aim of producing well-rounded students trained to draw from the Islamic legacy in order to deal effectively with contemporary, contemporary issues in particular as important. And from the prophetical model, prophetical as, as educator, as a universal mercy and a source of illumination. Kitabun, uh, Allah Ta'ala sent us a kitab in a nur mubin. He is the nur mubin, Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. And his nur is his akhlaq, his outlook, his everything. That's his nur, the perfection of every moral quality in him. That's his nur, really. And the foundation of the Medina is, is the foundation is education, number one. It is compassion towards people and illumination with the aim of transmitting information uh, mission for transformation or changing, you know, transmuting information into transformation. And it's our, we believe it's our collective responsibility as Muslims, as a community of Ikra, as people of faith, to learn, to pursue knowledge, to promote learning, and to ensure that we have leadership who are imbued with knowledge and understanding. And let us remember, lastly, the promise of Allah Ta'ala, يَرْفُ اللَّهُ الَّذِينَ آمَنُوا مِنْكُمْ وَالَّذِينَ أُتُوا إِلَمًا دَأَمْ دَرَجَاتِ وَاللَّهُ لَا تَعْمَنُوا خَبِيرٌ For us, you know, truly to be, we, Allah Ta'ala raises those of us um, who strive for ilm, uh, the recipients of, of ilm in grades and grades and stations, uh, beyond stations. Uh, and Allah Ta'ala is most aware of what you do. So we're going for very informed, positively transformed um, people, students, to be less confrontational in all of that, less demeaning and less hurtful towards other people. <laughs> تبسم تبسم وخل الهموم وخل الغموم وخل الضجاج